26 uh, yesterday with Lazarus and uh, we titled the message all the right words and certainly uh, Mary and Martha seemed to have the right words but when it came to roll away the stone they weren't so right after all uh, but today in event 27 in John chapter 11 verses 45 through 54 and we're still in AD 29 uh, we see the results of raising Lazarus. Remember Jesus said uh, that if you'll only believe and he was raised and he also said it was going to be for the glory of God and it says that many believed in him as a result of the raising of Lazarus. However, we know there's always some bad parts too and uh, we need to think about the fact that in chapter 11 uh, verse 35 it says that Jesus wept. <laughs> Most people that are told they got to memorize 10 verses, that's one of the ones they pick because it's two words. But I want to ask you a question. Have you ever thought why he wept? Did he weep out of compassion? Did he weep for Mary and Martha? Did he weep because the pain and the problems they had to go through? Did he weep for Lazarus and the fact that he had to suffer death? Or, my speculation, he wept because he had to bring Lazarus back from heaven. That heaven is such a wonderful place, he wept over Lazarus having to come back from heaven to live a few more years here on earth. In any case, he wept. And so we go on to verse 46. Some went to told the Pharisees about the raising of Lazarus. They held a special council, both the priests and the Pharisees, and uh, they talked about with all of these signs and miracles that soon everybody would believe in him. And little did they know, nobody is going to ever always believe in him. Uh, there's going to always be those that doubt, even though he's raised people from the dead and done all of the miracles that he did, and we have the Bible to testify to all of the effects leading into his life and his life and his resurrection. But nevertheless, they were concerned that everybody would believe in him, then the Romans would come and give all of the authority that the Hebrews had to the Romans. Uh, would, the Romans would take away from the Hebrews and give it to Jesus. Uh, in any case, uh, they had this meeting, and Caiaphas, uh, who was the high priest that year, uh, said it was expedient for one man to die for the people that the whole nation should not perish. Uh, and so we see that the Holy Spirit put into the mind of Caiaphas to say these words, tells us clearly that in the scriptures in verses 51 and 52, uh, because that's exactly what Jesus did. Uh, he died for everyone. Uh, and we know that those, those words were put into Caiaphas' mouth by the Holy Spirit in any case, we uh, see that from that day forward, they planned to kill him. And uh, verse 54, it says that Jesus uh, no longer could walk publicly amongst the cities and towns where he was, and that he had to withdraw into the wilderness uh, of Ephraim, and uh, uh, there he would uh, stay until it was time to go to the Passover. And uh, because the Passover was coming, the Jews that had decided to kill him uh, waited patiently or impatiently probably uh, hoping that Jesus would come but not sure that he would come uh, because of the uh, feast but uh, had given orders that if he did come they were to take hold of him and that they were going to do away with him. Well, I think it's important to realize that God's timing is always perfect. Let me say it again. 
God's timing is always perfect and I trust him and believe in him just as surely as he set all of the dates for Jesus and the events in Jesus' life. He has set the dates and the events that he plans for us and uh, we can trust him in those being always the perfect time, the perfect place, and the perfect way. Uh, certainly we know that sometimes people can cause things to go outside of God's perfect will, uh, but we know that God only wants the best and the perfect. And so we need to continue to trust him and to believe in him, to know that he has the power to raise, resurrect the dead and the power to give us an eternal life in heaven, not our bodies, but our souls and so that we can know that we'll live for eternity with him and read Revelation chapter 21. It's a wonderful promise. No more pain, no more sorrow, no more difficulties. They'll all have passed away uh, because he's going to prepare a perfect place for us. And that's my thought for today. I hope that it'll get comfort for you. And know that Jesus cares enough that he wept. Whether he wept over Lazarus having to come back from such a wonderful place as heaven, or whether he wept out of compassion for Mary and Martha and Lazarus for what they had to go through in order for God to be glorified, God was glorified, and he did weep over the event. God bless you and have a great day. know for certain about salvation through the Roman road. Romans 3.23, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Romans 5.8, but God demonstrates his own love toward us and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Romans 5.6, for while we were still helpless at the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. Romans 6.23, for the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. And Romans 10.9, that if we confess with our mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in our heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. God bless you and have a great day.